episode 7 of Spinning Dreams. My name is Laura, and this is the vlog where I talk about all the things that I'm knitting and sewing and making in general. And this episode, I will be talking about my knitting works in progress and my sewing machine saga. And Mark will also join us to talk about his spinning and dyeing, most recent spinning and dyeing. And I will also mention some holiday type makes as well from the garden. So grab something warm to drink and I'll get started. So I have quite a few works in progress this time and I'll start with my knitting works in progress. You may have seen on my Instagram that I finally decided to try out a fade project. Um, many people have done the fade projects um, by Andrea Maori and others like Hoagie Locatelli and there are so many cool fade projects out there to try and I was admiring them from a distance and thought they looked really cool um, but I just never really felt like I had the right fade uh, colorway going on in my stash and yeah there are just so many projects and I just never got around to it until now and I'm really happy that I am because it's a really special project to me because it's actually using only Mark's hand spun hand dyed wool, which is pretty cool that we had a whole fade range going on. And I'm, I'm doing Andrea Maori's free your fade. I think that's the one. Yeah. And it's a shawl pattern. That's quite simple. It's mostly garter with a little bit of eyelet detail. So I'll show you. Um, I haven't gotten very far, but you can see here that I have started with a kind of a tannish color, which is his cough tea. <laughs> if you remember from previous episodes, he did a coffee tea blend dye bath. And so it's this really nice kind of camel color. So it starts off with the cough tea and then I faded into a very subtle kind of avocado color and We've had several different batches of avocado that he's done. And so there have been some lighter versions and some darker versions and some that look more tonal than others. And this one was quite similar to the cough tea. So I thought I could just really blend that nicely. And I think it does. And this pattern is really cool because she teaches you how to um, blend and fade in one of the, the sections here, the garter sections. And so there's not really any, like, you don't have to wonder how to do it. <laughs> she really does a good job of telling you how to do it and how you can um, add in the next color. So I'm really, really enjoying this project. It's fairly mindless once you get to understand the construction of the shawl so far anyway. And, um, and I'm just loving seeing all the tones of Mark's hand dyed wool in this special project. So I feel really happy that I've finally taken the plunge into the fade, um, whatever rabbit hole. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'll let you know how that goes. The other colors I'll show you that I will be fading in at some stage are this other, this darker shade of avocado. And you can see here that it is quite a bit darker than the avocado that's currently on the needles. So that'll be a bit of a contrast, not much, but a bit. And then from there, I'll fade in some logwood, which um, is a lighter logwood because Mark used a small amount of logwood in the dye bath. But then he also experimented with a darker, more concentrated logwood dye bath, and I'll fade into that next. So you can see it's going to be, I think, quite the range. I'm pretty, pretty happy with how much variation there will be, but it's all within this kind of earthy, sort of reddish, purpley tones. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with that and it's been really fun. So I would recommend Andrea's um, fade for your fade pattern. It's really good. Um, and the next thing that I've been working on is also from Mark's hand dyed hand spun, um, in his blackberry colorway. <laughs> I 
that I actually um, was part of the 100 subscriber giveaway, if you remember. And I we gifted that to um, a subscriber, uh, the, the Blackberry skein. I had one left over, so I thought, well, I want to make something with it because I hadn't yet. And this beautiful um, bonnet, as you know, I've been on a bonnet kick for our baby coming anytime now. And so I've done this beautiful um, Karen's bonnet by Petite Knit. And it's a really unique pattern, I think, uh, for a bonnet. It has a smocking stitch pattern here which is just really cool looking to me. Um, you can see the way that it pulls together and it's a really fun, fun pattern, knitting pattern to do. Um, it's interesting, but repetitive. And so I haven't gotten tired or bored of that while I was doing it. And the back here is kind of like a ribbed decrease as you can see. And the trim here is, uh, I think, a one by one ribbing, which is working pretty well there to snug it in. And then here at the neck is a stock stockinette casing. Now, her instructions were to, um, you know, knit the stockinette casing and then to fold it over and use a needle to graft it in or to sew it in on the underside. I did, that was my one modification, I guess you could say, where I actually knit, I picked up stitches along the inside of the bonnet and knit them together and then bound them off as I went. So it's a little bit more structured maybe than her version probably would have been. And I'm, I think that it's fine. It's just another way of doing it, I think. So that's what I did there. And at the moment I'm knitting the I-cord um, tie that will go into that casing to make it a drawstring uh, tie here at the neck. So yeah, overall I'm really enjoying this pattern as well. You know, I enjoy petite knit her patterns. I've done quite a few of them now. And this one was no um, disappointment to me. It was, it's been really good. So I'm really happy to have that. This was, oh, by the way, a size zero. I think the smallest, the smallest of the bonnet sizes. So it'll fit our baby when she's really quite small. And I really love the blackberry. It's a really subtle earthy purple lavender color. So yeah, that's, those are my works in progress for knitting. It's been really fun. So you may remember from last episode that I had a sewing machine saga and that was a little bit of a tale of woe and I was feeling kind of down about it because I had purchased a sewing machine. I decided after many months of thinking about it to buy a new sewing machine and enjoyed it for probably like three or four days and then it was faulty and I had to return it. That was so sad. Um, but it did reinforce the idea that I do actually want a sewing machine right now. So there's that. I got to try one and it also helped me to figure out what I want at this stage of my life in a sewing machine. And so my husband and I, we looked some more at what's out there. And as you know, because of coronavirus, a lot of people are getting into crafting and making and a lot of the sewing machines have disappeared from the market because of that. And I was struggling to find one that was, you know, had all the good ratings and all the, the good specs and everything in my budget. And we were feeling like either we would have to compromise on the budget or get something that may or may not have been what I was looking for until I just started to think, well, I actually wouldn't mind having the same sewing machine that I've had for 10 years and just get the same exact one <laughs> um, and just enjoy that because I have really enjoyed that sewing machine. It's a silver Viscount machine. And so I was looking at that and it was available um, in one or two places 
here in the UK. Um, and just as I was about to settle on that, I noticed that Silver by Count had another one. Um, it's a little bit more updated and it has a computerized aspect to it, which I'd never had before. And I was pretty sure I didn't need that, but I was open to the idea, especially since it was from the brand that I've relied on for the last 10 years. I was open to a computerized version from that brand. So we went for the computerized version and I now have a sewing machine that I actually really love. Um, and it's been great to have it in my life. Again, <laughs> this brand is, I, I feel like it's maybe not one that many people know about. And I don't know if that's because it's a, um, just a small British brand. I, I don't know, but I haven't heard people talk about it as much, but I've loved it. And I love this one now it's, um, the silver Viscount 1080 if you want to look that up and it's it's kind of hard to get your hands on I could only really find one place where it was being sold so I can link to that below as well if anybody's interested in the UK or in Europe maybe they will ship to Europe uh, mainland Europe but anyway I'm very excited I love sitting at my sewing machine now it's just everything I could have wanted and more I didn't realize and it cost less than the one that was faulty and it had, has more bells and whistles than that one did. So I'm feeling very grateful and very happy that it's worked out the way that it has. Right away, I got into sewing some curtains for a house. Um, so I sewed three different curtains um, for our, our house in different rooms. And then I was able to mend a football jersey from Mark's University days, which just felt good <laughs> to do something practical. And then on top of that, I've also been working on my quilts. Um, so the family quilt has come along quite a bit. I won't be able to put it all into frame um, because it's big. It's turning out to be about king size. Um, but I'll show you uh, snippets of it here and kind of the colors that are coming together in it. And um, these are all just fabrics that I found in my wardrobe or on eBay. And um, I'm using the Ohio Star pattern mostly, and then adding in a Christmas star for the center. And I love it so far. I wasn't sure <laughs> at the beginning because it was so hodgepodge. Like the colors have been just whatever looks good to me. And I, I knew that I wanted um, like light stars on a dark background. Um, but other than that, I really didn't know which colors I was going to go for. Um, I'm just going to open it right up so you can see the Christmas star in the middle. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I really didn't know where I was going with it, <laughs> but I'm really happy with it now. And, um, one of the things I want to talk about with this one is how I've used, um, this scrap bundle from a lady on eBay who um, was just um, destashing some Moda crumb cake, the blueberry crumb cake uh, fabric line. Now, normally I do not do fabric line bundles. I don't typically, when I start a quilt, I don't typically look at, you know, what's out there on the designer lines. Like I don't, I don't go with Moda. I don't go with Kona. I don't, I don't stick with any one, um, color or design line, but this was just one of those times when it happened to be on eBay and I was like, Oh, I really like the way that looks and it'll tie things in. It's a good price. I love using de stashed, de stashed fabrics. So I tried it and I actually really loved using a fabric line like that where everything just went together really well all the colors all the patterns were like designed to be together of course these amazing people who think about those things and put it together so I have a new appreciation for that and um, I'm definitely more open to trying that it tends to be a little bit pricier if you're gonna go to um, look for that you know when you're starting a quilt but I actually really enjoyed it and it's one of those times where I I think I've been a bit stubborn and <clears throat> excuse me, like 
tried to just do things my own way. <laughs> and it's been really good for my creativity, I think, to just do things my own way and pull different pieces and try and make them all work um, in an artistic way. But I really haven't taken advantage of all the work, the hard work that other people have done in coming up with a design line like that. So I'm, I'm excited that I did that and that I have that um, avenue open to me now. So that's the family quilt. It's coming along. I will keep you updated um, on the progress of that. But yeah, that's, I've been able to make progress on my new sewing machine with that. And then the other one is the baby quilt. That one is a lot smaller. And so I've, I'm nearly finished with it. Um, and if you'll remember, I used green fibers, organic brushed cotton, um, and it's so soft. I love it. I still love it. <laughs> and I wish I could make everything <laughs> in my world out of this soft, fluffy, organic, um, flannel. And yeah, I was using the dye pots that Mark had for his wool to dye up some of the, the strips of the cotton. And I have put them all together and, um, I also did my own independent <laughs> dye pot of turmeric or turmeric, um, however you say that. Um, and it came out very bright. The yellow from the turmeric was very bright. And I was a little bit concerned that I would overtake all the other colors, but I wanted some sunshine in this quilt because it was looking a little bit muddy. The colors were looking a bit muddy on the cotton and this definitely did the job. So. I'll show you how that yellow from the turmeric has really brought a pop of life to this quilt. And I've done an Irish chain design, just a simple single Irish chain. And you can see my hair there. <laughs> um, you can see how the, the turmeric just changes the tone even of this of these colors. It was very brown and now it's it's just brought, yeah, different hues out of the, the avocado and the mint and the nettle and the logwood. It just looks really cool. So that's the top. The quilt top is finished and I've just recently dyed up the backing, which is a simple avocado avocado dyed, um, more of that cotton flannel and I didn't use a mordant. I was using a soya mordant, um, like Rebecca Desnos had recommended, but I decided to just use the tannins from the avocado, um, that are naturally in the avocado to allow this to just be a light pink. And I'm really happy with it. It's just what I was looking for. Just something that's not the creamy white of the cotton and just something of interest for the back. So that's that. And then I will bind the quilt um, with this flannel that I found on eBay, <laughs> um, which is just a ditzy floral, a neutral. It's like a, like a tannish uh, light brown with a cream floral. And so that will be the binding. It'll be just a little strip along the edge. And I think that will complement the colors well. So that's the baby quilt. It's so squishy and I can't wait to get hand quilting on that. That'll be soon. I think, um, I've already bought the batting, a cotton batting to go sandwiched in between and, um, uh, from the cotton patch, I'll link to that as well. And I've been looking at Susie quilts online. If you want somebody who has done many quilts and has lots of great tutorials and tips on just starting out quilting, or even if you're a seasoned quilter, there's a lot of chatter on her website and um, how to do things and the best tools and all of that. She is, I think, based in America and the States, um, but a lot of the things you can get around the world. Um, and I'll link to those things that I, the tools that I'm finding helpful. So that's my quilting progress.
Hi, my name is Mark. I'm Laura's husband and I uh, want to talk to you a bit about spinning and dyeing. You might re recognize the, the sweater that I'm wearing. Uh, I think it was featured in episode one of Spinning Dreams uh, when Laura was knitting it. It's now finished. It's now keeping me very, very warm. It's made from, I think, an Icelandic wool. Uh, you can go back and uh, look it up when Laura was talking about it in, I think, episode one. Uh, but it's, I'm wearing it now and it's keeping us keeping me very warm when, when we go on our walks around here in the beautiful countryside around here and I put it on as an extra layer and it's really great so I thought well uh, I should probably wear it as I'm making an appearance on the show today and uh, show you uh, it being put to good use so uh, that's my nice Icelandic sweater I'm still doing a lot of spinning and uh, enjoying doing that we the plain fleece that we've had for the past few months is getting close to um, being used up actually probably used about three quarters of it i was originally doing quite a worsted preparation and uh, doing a kind of a fingering weight and plying plying it uh, quite with quite a lot of tension so it was uh, quite a um, uh, quite a thin strong kind of yarn. I've been trying to get it more light and fluffy uh, in in the last uh, few weeks and that's been uh, I think that's been going well so uh, trying to do it with more of a woolen preparation where you have the fibers going in different directions and spinning with uh, plying with less tension and I've uh, been quite uh, quite happy with what's been coming out and been dyeing them again I think I mentioned last time elderberry dyeing uh, so this one is uh, how the elderberry turned out. Uh, I was going for greys or blues or purples is what I was trying to get and yeah again it didn't really turn out like I thought it would. Uh, when I uh, when I put the elderberries in the dye bath and heated them up it was again coming out of ready pink and reds and pinks are great but I've done quite a few like that. It seems to be what we always get whenever we dye anything. So I thought, oh no, it's, it's another red and pink. How could I change this? So I dumped in a whole load of baking soda to change the pH. And it really did change the color. It went from reds and pinks to kind of greeny gray, a green gray kind of color. And I still didn't know what how it was gonna come out really at the end. Uh, but this is how it came out after, uh, after simmering in there for a few hours, taking it out, rinsing it through. Uh, and it's a very light green. Uh, there's a, a touch of kind of yellowy browny, which looks looks a bit dirty, but actually it's it's kind of a nice, um, yeah, just a nice variation in colour there. Uh, but basically a, uh, a a light green, uh, which yeah wasn't what I was expecting, but I think it's it's kind of pretty, and I'll pass it on to Laura to see what she can uh, knit with it. Uh, the other thing that I've been dyeing uh, just this past weekend. I went back to the tried and trusted avocado, which I've done a couple of times before. And it, avocado is nice because it's very simple. It has, uh, I think Laura mentioned it has tannins naturally in the, I think it's in the avocado pits uh, have the tannins. And tannins uh, are a natural mordant. So I didn't even use any mordant with this. I just heated up the avocado. There's lots of avocado pits and skins that we've been saving for the past few months. Uh, Laura likes avocados being from California so we get through quite a few and I always save the pits and the skins for dyeing. Uh, just dry them and then they, they last for a long time. So then I heated them up, uh, simmered them for a while, uh, brought the temperature of the water down again because you can't shock the wool. Uh, put the wool in, heated it back up, simmered it. Not actually for very long which I think is why I didn't get a, a very dark colour this time. But I really like uh, how it turned out. It's a very it's a pink, a kind of light, dusty pink, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's really pretty. Um, it, the, Laura, I think, showed some other uh, avocados that we did before, and they, they were a little bit darker. But this is just very nice and, and subtle. And again, I don't know what uh, Laura's going to make with it, but I think uh, it might make a, a nice uh, baby hat or baby sweater. I don't know if it's enough wool for a baby sweater, but babies are little, so probably, but Laura, Laura will figure that out. Uh, but yeah, I think it'll be really pretty, as long as we have a girl. If we have a boy, it might not look so great on him, but uh, yeah, uh, quite happy with uh, how that turned out. So the floral project that I've been part of has been really inspiring still, and just to update you, things have been growing really well. 
Um, the things that I've planted have all come up without fail, and I just keep getting more seeds from the monthly shipments that she sends out, that Nicola sends out, and I have a lot of sweet peas coming up, and just all sorts, and I am learning so much about which things to plant when, and how many to plant. I typically over overplant my seeds. I plant too many, then I have to kill a bunch, which is really sad to me. Um, so I've learned to just go a bit easier and save some of the seeds for next spring. And um, I also commissioned Mark to build a cold frame for me, and he has succeeded <laughs> and it's done. And that's been really great to have that set up and all of my little babies are overwintering in that cold frame. Um, and they're doing well so far in there. And I think they'll be strong for spring and I'll have a nice early batch of flowers come next spring. So I would highly recommend something like that if you can become part of a club for flower growing or vegetable growing and it really helps you to stay on track and the Facebook community that I've been a part of with that has been really fun to just see everybody's questions and the mistakes that people make is really encouraging <laughs> and the, the mice that get into the seedlings and just the different things that happen. It's been really nice to not be doing that on my own during this um, unique time you know, when different lockdowns around the world. I think everybody is really enjoying community things like this online, like uh, flower projects or other gardening projects. So that's the floral project, and I'm really happy that I'm still continuing with that. And also, we've been working in the garden on just pruning. It's that time of year, and it's a really cozy time of year, usually inside. Um, so we're not outside a lot lately with the rain, but... When we have had a bit of a dry patch, we've gone out and we trimmed the willow bush um, and I was able to get some long um, pieces for a, a willow wreath, which I've been wanting to do. And so I made my first willow wreath ever, <laughs> which was really fun. It's a little bit wonky, as you'll see, um, but I think it'll look great on our front door and plan to decorate that for the holidays and the winter season and we still have our rose bushes to to prune and um, just some older flower heads that need to be cut back from the last you know the summer and the autumn growth and we'll look forward to spring and when everything comes new again so i'm now 39 weeks pregnant and feeling very good and everything's been going so well so we're really happy about that. And we're now at the waiting stage, uh, just waiting for baby to come whenever she will. And we're pretty sure it's a girl based on scans, but you never know. So we'll see what happens, uh, but we'll keep you updated. We're really excited and we'll let you know when that happens. And yeah, we're having Thanksgiving on Thursday for American Thanksgiving. And we're really happy about that. It's very festive time of year. And so if you're American, happy Thanksgiving. If you're not, I hope you're enjoying the season right now, the end of autumn and the beginning of winter and all that brings for knitting and making. And if you're not in this hemisphere, we hope you're having a really good time in, in the season that you're in. And we wish you all the happy making and we will see you next time, hopefully with a little one. Bye. <laughs>